As you can see, looking at this manhole, it's a masonry structure. We've removed a few rows of brick, uh, nothing real level to start the rebuild off of. So we've added a precast concrete ring to give us a flat surface to build off of. And you're going to see how we use the liner and the tools that come with your package to do this rebuild and get the frame and lid level with the road. At this stage of the operation, we want to determine how much liner we need to get the frame level with the road. So we're going to put a level across from one side to the other, and we're going to measure. We're going to do this in several points so that we can determine the highest point and cut the liner accordingly. We've got a measurement of 9 and 3 eighths. Now we'll have to determine what the height of the casting is and then subtract that from the 9 and 3 eighths and that will give us the length of the liner. Let's take a minute to talk about types of castings. As you can see this casting has a ridge or a flange that comes down from the uh, edge of the main flange. We want to be sure that that's not going to interfere with the location of the liner. So if you take a piece of 27 inch liner and you place that on the bottom. You can see how that's going to hit right on that flange. Probably not the ideal size liner to use for that frame. But let's try a piece of 30 and see where it falls. This is a 30 inch liner and as you can see it is big enough to go outside of the flange. We want to get the measurement of the frame from top to bottom and we don't want to include that that flange because we're not going to be putting that right on top of the liner. So let's show you how we get a measurement. To get the measurement of the frame and lid and transfer it over to the easy slope marking device we're going to use this caliper that's included in your package. As you can see we went inside the frame, we went from the top to the bottom, we tightened it and set it and now we're going to use that to transfer over to the easy slope marker. In a case where you've got a flange and your caliper will not work with that flange, we want to use an alternative method of determining the casting height. So we're going to put a level on the top. We're going to measure to the bottom of the flange. We've got seven and three quarters inches. We're simply going to transfer that measurement over to the marking device. We're going from the top of the measuring hub to the bottom of the marker. And now we'll simply tighten that up, that set screw, and we're ready to use the marker. We determined the height from the cone to the road surface, and we've deducted the height of the manhole frame from that. We're going to have a safety margin, so we're going to cut a slightly longer piece, four or five inches long, and we're going to mark this bigger section of liner. We'll mark it several places around and then we're going to use a battery powered saw to cut this short section off. Now that we've got a short piece of the liner cut we're going to place it on the manhole cone and we're going to mark it so that when we take it off and cut it and replace it we have it in the same orientation so we'll just use a little bit of paint put a couple marks after marking and cutting when we place it back on the cone it's in the exact same orientation. What you're looking at is the easy slope tool system that will allow you to mark accurately your liner and cut it to the height and slope of the road. We're going to show you how these components work. The easy slope system will work on an aluminum six foot level. We're going to show you how the components attach to the level. You've got your end plates. They'll go on the end and then they'll tighten down. We have the center section, which attaches to the center of the level. It doesn't have to be extremely tight, just snug it down. Now we're going to install the marker that you received with your package. You'll see how the tip is oriented. We want that sideways, just like you see it, and you want to slide it all the way in. You'll want to keep the cap on this when you're not using it so it doesn't dry out, and you'll want to avoid damage to the tip. When you use this marker, you want to make sure that you push the point of the marker in the direction of travel. You don't want to drag the point away from the direction of travel. It will deform the tip. 
When the tip becomes deformed, your accuracy will diminish. We're using the easy slope marker to put a line on the liner. We're going to cut on that line with a battery powered saw and that's going to give us the correct height and slope to bring the frame to road level. When we're using the easy slope marker system, it's a one man operation. You want to avoid running the skid plates on the end into any declivities that might be in the road. You want to watch that you don't press too hard with the marker and you want to continue around the liner and get the mark all the way around. Now we're ready to cut the liner. We're going to remove it from the cone. We're going to use a battery powered saw to cut on the line. Let's talk about cutting the liner. You'll want to use a battery powered saw with a decent sized battery. This is a 36 volt DeWalt. Works well for this application. Let's talk about setting the blade to the proper height. We want to get through the material, but we don't want a lot of blade protruding out. It'll cut easier and it'll be safer. It's a two-man operation for safety. Make sure you wear safety equipment, gloves, safety glasses. And the operator of the saw will place his foot in the bottom of the liner and he'll operate the saw. The second worker will hold the pipe and rotate the pipe towards the saw operator. We want to make sure and cut on the bottom of the line. Remember, this is the bottom of the material that was setting on the cone. You can tell that by the paint marks that are on it to locate it back on there. And we want to cut on the bottom because that's where the measurements were taken on the marker. So let's begin the cut. Not only will this repair be level with the height and slope of the road and look nice, it will also be watertight and vacuum testable. We're going to apply the Mr. Manhole liner sealant on the bottom of this liner. This is the part that's going right down on the cone. So we're going to use a battery powered caulk gun or whatever you have available for the 28 ounce tubes and we're going to apply a liberal amount of that Mr. Manhole sealant to bond that down to the cone. Okay, we're going to place this piece of liner back on the cone. We're going to match it up with the orientation mark. We're going to push it down so that we set that sealant on the cone, making sure that we don't have any voids. Remember, we're making a watertight repair in a vacuum tight repair. On the inside we want to wipe the sealant in a nice bead. This does two things. It makes it look better and it also reveals any shortages of material that we might have. We can fill in any voids if we see any at that time. Okay we want to make sure we have enough of the sealant to bond the bentonite strip to the cone. If you've got any light areas on the outside you want to make sure you touch that up. We're going to apply the bentonite strip and that will seat right into the sealant that squished out on the outside. You'll see that the strip has a 45 degree angle on a couple sides and you want to put that in on a 45 degree angle. So we'll show you how that goes in. You'll start it. Try to keep it out of the dirt because it's sticky. Dirt will get on it. And we don't want that. And then just work your way around the repair installing the material. When we get it all in place, then we'll remove the paper wrapper. Remember, for those of you that are working for municipalities, this specification is available on our website. You can download it. We have it on disk. So anybody that wants to adopt this specification, we make it very easy for them to do so. 
Okay, once you've wrapped the material all the way around the liner, then you want to go ahead and cut it the right length, and you want to knead it together. This material will swell in the presence of water and will keep any leakage from occurring in this chimney section. Okay, we want to apply a bead of sealant. We're going to glue the manhole frame directly to the liner. This is going to be our final seal. We want to make sure and do this, especially if we're vacuum testing. This will bond the frame down to the liner and will be the final seal for uh, vacuum testing purposes. It will prohibit any water from penetrating into this repair. We're going to be replacing the existing frame you can see we're placing it gently down on that liner and then seating it in that uh, sealant. We're now replacing the lid. If there was a problem with level, this would be the time to fix it. But as you can see, it's perfect. You do want to check with the flow of traffic.